if you can press either the little hand button or um, or your uh, put your hand up in the video screen if you can hear me clearly. I can hear you, but it's scratchy. I can hear. I can hear you. I can hear you. Are you uh, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Hey, are we up and running? I can hear you. Yeah, the audio, the audio is not so clear. I think it'll be a little better if uh, you just mute everybody else, Barry, and just yeah, keep so yourself you. unmuted. Great, thank you. We'll do that. Sully, please mute everybody, get everyone on mute, and then we'll rock and roll and get this thing, thing going. So uh, great to see you all. Okay, so welcome. Welcome this Friday afternoon. I can see Blair is in the room and I'll bring him in shortly. Just to, I just want to ask you guys, how many of you know that we are in a changing world right now <laughs> to very many degrees? And, you know, today we're going to talk about change, how to handle change and where that change really, really leaves you. But, you know, I'm going to set a little bit of context for you because this is where a lot of people find themselves right now you know in the journey in life and i learned this i learned this from blair a long time ago in the journey on life the goal really is to get to this place called uh called power what, what, whatever you want to call it power success influence that's our goal and the journey to power has a couple of steps it starts right down here in what we call invisibility or being invisible. So when in, in any journey you start out, nobody knows you, nobody knows your product, nobody, uh, nobody knows uh, where you're going, what your business is. And there's certain things that we teach that allows you to be able to move through this process. So I'm not gonna take you through all the steps. What I'm gonna do is outline where we sit right now in the world. So essentially you go from invisible to emergence, you emerge, People start getting to know who you are. You go from emergence to chaos. People start getting to know who you are. They start getting to know your business, your, your, your product. You start getting into a little bit of chaos. There's certain things that you've got to do to move through there, like systemize and stabilize. When you go from chaos, you get into normal operations, which we call normal ops. And then from normal ops, if you, if, if you grow from there, you go into abundance and essentially from abundance into power. Now, for many people, you were sitting over here, and then suddenly, suddenly, especially in South Africa, the president made a, made a, uh, did a speech, and for many people, pulled the rug out from underneath their feet, from normal operations, get up, go to work, run my business, pr provide a service in this way, to, for some of you, abundance, really, 2020 kicked off exceptionally well, what you suddenly found yourself in was chaos in this place, not emergence anymore, but emergency. And it's in these two areas that we need to operate from right now that, that are either going to pull us back up to normal operations, abundance, and back into power, or they're going to drop us right down to, uh, to invisibility. So with that in mind, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a uh, good friend of mine, men, business mentor, business partner, and um, and rich dad advisor. But not only is he a rich dad advisor, in my mind, he is one of the global leading sort of masters around sales, team development, and entrepreneurship. 
and especially teaching people how to do what we call stand in the heat. So will you guys join me in welcoming a good friend of mine and uh, mentor, Blair Singer. Blair, great having you on the call, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you, South Africa. Thank you, South Africa. Um, it's just an honor to be here with so many entrepreneurs, uh, people that are looking to make a, make a difference. Uh, you may have heard me say this before. There was a book called The Tale of Two Cities. And the very opening line uh, in Charles Dickens' book was, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunities that we have right now are amazing. Uh, and the dangers we have also are amazing. So I'm just honored to be here, Barry. Thank you for zooming me in. Um, and I'm happy to support in whatever way I can. Great having you here. And I know right now we're in a, like most people, a really busy time and a busy time of change. But I really, let's kick it off with this. What's your take on where the world is right now? <laughs> okay. Well, if you go back to your chart, I mean, it's clearly in chaos. It's clearly in chaos and dropping quickly to emergency. And so what's, what's happening is, and some people will continue that plunge all the way down into invisible. Those people that are, in, and if I could address people in business, because I know that's our audience, uh, most, many of our audience, is there people who will lose their businesses. They will not, they will not go further. Um, they will uh, resort to other means to stay alive. I mean, I think people will survive. It's just that uh, people will resort to criminal behavior, which I know that um, you and guys in South Africa, you've seen that. Uh, not just now, but you've had to live through that for decades. Uh, you'll see people that will stand around and wait for government handouts and bailouts and stuff like that, um, which a lot of people are doing right now in America. I mean, the, the amount of unemployed has doubled week on week over the last three weeks in America, as has the number of de coronavirus deaths has doubled week on week here. So we're in a very steep plunge. Uh, and from all those things. However, <laughs> I'm going to say this, is that if you, there is a third category and the third category is, is entrepreneur. And you and I've talked about this is that the best bet, the only bet, the most, the, the clearest bet or path to financial independence, security, having your dreams is as an entrepreneur, because I, I'm assuming if you're on this call, those other two options are not available to you. Or there may be a, a desire to move in that direction, but resist it. Hang out with this guy, Barry Mitchell, because he's probably one of the best team leaders on the planet, particularly in difficult times, in difficult times. So it's, it, it, I believe it is the best of times. Is there a clear path to get through it? Not exactly. We're going to we'll figure that out as, as, we're building the, as we're building the aircraft. Uh, well, some people say, well, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm staying at home. I'm telling you right now, I have so much to do right now. I don't have any time to think or sleep. There's so much, go there's so much going on when other people are frozen with fear. So I'm just going to say this. If you're an entrepreneur and raise your hand physically, let me see if I can see the whole group. Yeah, physically, if your camera's on, ra physically raise your hand if you are an entrepreneur or if you're in business for yourself. Let me see a show of hands. All right, that's good. That's that's most of you. Well, congratulations, congratulations. The market has just done you a big favor. Now I'm not telling you I got any whiz bang answers, but I would tell you that if you've got 134 people on this call and this streaming on Facebook live right now, that between all of you there are resources that could create businesses, generate income, retain uh, retain clients. Uh, all over the place. So I just applaud you for taking on one of the most the one of the risky tasks. I mean, being in business is no joke. Being an entrepreneur is no joke. It's rough. How many of you, how many would agree that it can be rough? Raise your hand. Okay. But if you follow a couple of core principles, you will do well. Number one, you must know how to sell. <laughs> sell, help, pe help people, communicate. 
If you can't put, a, if you know how to get on a camera right now, with, with which all of you do, and you know how to communicate directly, you you have a chance. You have an opportunity. There are some people that can't even figure out how to get onto their laptops or or, or are camera shy. That's not going to work for you right now. You've got to be able to communicate, find out what people want, and help them get it. And by the way, people's wants right now are different than they were three weeks ago. Same clients, but different needs. You got to be, you got to be sensitive to that. You got to pivot your message right now. Second thing, if there's one thing you got to learn, is you got how to gen, how to communicate, generate income, and help people get what they want. Number two is your ability to take care of your community. What Barry's done a great job in South Africa is he's built this community of most of you, and hopefully even more of you. Because a guy by the name of Chris Martinson wrote a book called The Crash Course. And I got to meet him a few years ago. And he struck me with one very profound comment. He said this. And in South Africa, you guys would know this more than anybody. More than anybody. He said, your number one asset. <laughs> Somebody managing, managing your trust. Hold on, Blair. Sorry, open Blair up, please. What's that? Okay, you're open now. Good. Just okay, can, should I start again? You. Yeah. Okay. That what Chris Martinson said in his book, uh, The Crash Course, is that, the, that your most important asset is not your gold, silver, precious metals, the money you have in the bank, even your property. Your greatest asset, your greatest asset is your community. Okay? That's a community or your team. Right now, within this call right here and the extended call, there are resources. And if you have a tight team that takes care of its culture, has a strong set of rules that is, that is uh, um, strong context, high frequency of communication, then what will happen is that you will be able to survive anything. Not only survive, but flourish. So number one skill, your ability to communicate and so number two take care of your community nurture your community and your team and number three probably most important of all is you've got to master this the what's going on between your right ear and your left ear your little voice everybody know the little voice we're talking about if you've been working with barry you know exactly what we're talking about it's that little voice in your head that goes what little voice i don't know that's the one I can't do this. What should I do? Who's doing this? Who's doing what? Who can I help? Who can help me? All that stuff is your ability to control that and keep your emotion stable will keep your intelligence high. Remember, when your emotion is high, type in the chat box. When your emotion is high, what is low? Type it in the chat box. You guys should know the, the answer to this one. What, what's the answer? Very good. Intelligence. That's right. Very good. High emotion. Keep yourself muted. Keep yourself muted, please. Okay. Okay. So how do you do that? Well, it takes practice. It takes training. Those of you that are part of our inner circle tribe of BSTA, Blair Singer Training Academy, trainers and coaches, You've been given some amazing tools. Sorry, guys. Do me a favor, please. Make sure you stay muted. If you go to the participant list, there we go. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So those of you, I was saying, those of you that are part of the BSTA group, you've been given some very, very powerful tools. Barry and I just got off of our weekly call with our, with our global team, given, given some very, very powerful questions and processes to help their, 
clients to help themselves to keep your emotions stable so that you can be intelligent and make good choices. Um, I believe, as I said, as Barry would say, that being an entrepreneur is, is the greatest position to be in right now. There are opportunities everywhere. Will they all work? No. Will you be successful at all of them? No. Will you make mistakes? Absolutely. But the truth of it is that if you have a great team and you collaborate, which I, by the way, they don't teach you in school, they teach you that collaboration is cheating. Now, how, how, is, how good is that advice? How good is that advice now for those people that are standing in the unemployment lines? We have been taught not to cooperate. We have been taught to revere authority and just wait to be told what to do. Well, how's that working now? Uh, it's not working. And so you guys, if you're on this call with me, if you're on this call with Barry, you guys are entrepreneurs and you're leaders. And the world needs leaders more than ever. And that's why Barry and I and our team is committed to providing the best business skills for entrepreneurs on the planet. And we're going to be, we're getting, we're going to get as much of that good from, re, by the way, from real teachers, <laughs> not from PhD, yeah. not from, and not from school teachers and not from opportunists and just great platform speakers, but from real entrepreneurs that have really done it really made their mark that can tell you the right and the wrong things to do and to make that available to everybody. I mean, that's our commitment. And I think it's those of you who want to participate in that with us, um, could be the greatest opportunity in, in your, in your entire career, I believe as an entrepreneur. Uh, I, I think so. Blair, you know, you, you bring up such an important point right now and Robert talks a lot about it. It's about fake. And in a time right now, when we're in emergency and when we're in chaos, people will jump for anything, won't they? And, uh, and right now it's being very, very aware on who you're gonna follow, who you're gonna listen to and where you're gonna take advice from because advice will come all over the place in chaos and, uh, and an emergency. So in terms of that and in terms of where you're driving entrepreneurship, teaching, linking close to the likes of Robert because you're very close to Robert, what are some of the uh, what are the, what where's some of the thinking that's happening right now in the last couple of weeks in terms of uh, in terms of advice around where the world's going? Well, I think that nobody knows where the world's going. I think that I, I think that you know the discussion. And I'm going to be meeting with Robert and the advisors in a couple hours. We're going to be discussing this, but from my, in, my but but in communicating with them right now all what the first thing to understand is there are cracks in the foundation there are cracks in our financial uh, our financial system there are cracks in our health systems there are cracks in each of our individuals our income our families all those things this crisis has exposed the cracks that were already in the in the foundation and so the very first thing to do is to identify those and start working on them. If your health isn't, for example, simple, if your health is not good, you are a candidate for a coronavirus. Okay. So what do you got to do? That's a crack in your health, in your personal health system. Start working on it now, today, eating the right foods, getting some exercise, get your lungs working a little bit. It's never too late to start. Never too late to start. Same thing with your finances. If you don't know, if you don't know how to sell, talk to Barry and, and he'll help you do that. You'll learn, you'll learn how to do these things. So the one thing that we know is we don't know how long it'll last. I suspect, this is my own opinion, that whenever major things happen like this, this is like 9-11 uh, in America, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, you know, World War One, World War Two. It's the same kind of thing. Certain things happen within a, a society and within a culture and within our civilization that change for that emergency, but they never change back. So there'll be some things that will never change back. There'll be some, and I don't know what they are, but there'll be some things that will never change back. The fact of the matter is that the, that the entire world was able to take, put this in almost the entire planet out of a, uh, half of eight of the seven billion people and put them into immediate lockdown within a matter of days speaks light years about what is possible on this planet in a good way and in a bad way 
So you as an entrepreneur, you have to re learn how to be really be able to take control of your world, your tribe, your team, and marry up with other tribes and other teams that are of like mind. I think that's, that's critical. That's, <coughs> excuse me, historically, it's always been that way. Now, what's going to happen to gold prices? I don't know. They should shoot up. They're not. Why? Because, well, there's all kinds of reasons for that that I'm not an expert on, Okay. Um, what's happening with properties up and down, who knows, but what I do know <laughs> as an entrepreneur is there are a lot of people that need help. They need help. And if you can't find somebody to help, even if you don't know how to make money doing it, and if you've got the ability and the time, go help somebody. You do that. We will all rise to a whole new level. But I think that the, in answer to your question, Barry, if I'm talking to the guys that are real entrepreneurs right now, is everybody's doing their best, number one, to retain the clients that they've got. And the reason you got to do, the, the way you do that is by increasing the frequency with your clients, talking to them more often, checking in with them, finding out how they're doing, get, and providing actually more service to them, maybe for the same price as you're charging. It's kind of a strategy now. More service for the same. And if you're trying to bring somebody new in, then you provide them the same of what you're providing now, maybe for a little less money. I mean, you just got to be creative in that thing. And I think that that's, everybody's right now trying to patch up the holes in, the, in their ships, but also with an eye for the future. I know that with our business, you and I've talked about it, I'm a little bit behind the eight ball, just to be honest. Uh, for the last 25, 30 years, I've been front, I'm traveling over 25 countries that stand on stages and helping people and uh, um, teaching that, teaching them how to sell and build teams and be entrepreneurs, all that stuff. Well, that, well, there's none of that anymore. So now we have to go virtual. You know, those people that three or four years ago created a lot of good online digital products are flying right now. They're, they're crushing it. It's, it's, you know, we are not on that curve, but am I going to panic? No. But what I'm doing is like, okay, great. I got the lesson. So we need to pivot and move. So everybody's pivoting and moving, uh, pivoting your message, pivoting your business if you need to. But think about this, gang. If you were working for somebody else, would you be able to do any of this? No. Would you, be, would, would you have any control of your income? No. Would you? And, and, and so as an entrepreneur, you is really the only position that you can take where you have the ability to control that, or at least to determine your own destiny. I, you said something really powerful to me the other day, and it was it went along the lines of this: the new path to freedom is entrepreneurship and being a real entrepreneur. And and I think you know we all know this: that coming through the school system and uh, through the typical system of education, entrepreneurship is not taught. And it, and it, it, people have to understand that to be an entrepreneur is going to require requires a whole different mindset and especially going into into this new world whatever this is this new normal that it's becoming whatever that is so in terms of that statement around you know your new path to freedom and uh, and real business skills for entrepreneurs expand on that a little bit for us okay well, I was start. I just start by saying is that I've always I've said for many many years that you know people say we have a global we have a, a climate crisis we've got a financial crisis. I've always said that there's only really one crisis, and the crisis is a crisis of education. I think the crisis is of education, and, and the reason I say that it's not even the content that they teach you in school, which ninety percent of it, or maybe eighty percent of it is irrelevant. Okay. It's the fact that the way you're taught, you're, you, we are not taught to be creative thinkers. We are not taught to collaborate. We are not taught to be entrepreneurial. We're not taught to be good communicators. And as Robert would say, we're taught nothing about money, nothing, nothing about how to sell, nothing about money, nothing about you know, maybe an accounting course, maybe at a university if you ever get there, but nothing. So the, the education system has failed spectacularly in the face of this crisis. And I believe that that's why we're in this crisis. Uh, if education would have done its job and been relevant and had real teachers teaching it, people on, I mean, the fact of the matter is that you have bureaucrats trying to manage a pandemic 
and yet there's no medical staff on in, in, in that team. These guys are, you know, and, and bureaucrats or rich white guys in, in some place, in some countries, and they don't have a clue. So I'm just going to say that real business skills for real entrepreneurs is probably the most priceless type of education that you can get your hands on. Uh, because like I said, you and I both said, you know, right in South Africa today, as we're speaking, you know, there are, there are people proposing ideas that are old. Uh, they're, they're becoming some opportunists, uh, but they're not, I got, so for me, I got to be very careful as an entrepreneur. When I teach entrepreneurship that I'm relevant to the people that I'm talking to my business as a speaker, trainer, leader, educator is different than a guy that's got a, a diesel part. Uh, diesel auto part business. Okay. So I can't necessarily, if I, if I'm a real teacher, if I'm a real teacher, I've got to teach that person lessons that are appropriate to that situation, to what they're doing. These are general principles of business. That's why the rich dad advisors are so powerful, you know, because we talk about law, taxes, communication, cash flow, paper assets, uh, business assets, you know, and, and to understand the language of money, to understand why this financial crisis is happening, and what does it mean? What does it mean when the government writes a check for two trillion dollars and ultimately to go to six trillion dollars? What does that do? How does that affect me as a truck driver? How does that affect me as a as as a because we all need money to feed our families and feed ourselves. Um, so that's why real education from real, uh, real entrepreneurs is so critical. Basic business skills. You know, maybe you're not good on social media. Well, now you need to learn how to do that a little bit more. Uh, maybe you're not good on technology. Well, you need to learn some of these basic things. You know, there's kind of the, the bait we were talking about the other day, Barry. There's the basics yep. of business. You know, if you look at the BI triangle, you know, you mission, team, Mission, team, leadership, which is, which is your context, right? Then you inside of it, your product or service, the, the legal aspect that protects you as, a, as an entrepreneur. The next part of the systems that will drive that business. Um, the communication, which, which is sales and marketing and all those pieces. And obviously the ability to manage cash flow. And along around all that is to be able to manage this crazy little voice in your head that sabotages it. That's basic. But now, and in the, that's that will be that's been part of business since the very, very, very beginning. But in addition to that, yes, you do need to be able to communicate better. You de- now, what's communication look like? And communication looks like me talking to you right here, which all of you can do. And you need to be able to do that and to understand how to do this and how to and how to find out what people want and need if you're isolated, if we are separated, because that that, that may be something that lives with us for a, a very, very long time. Yeah. OK, so just skills like that and, and that that people and, and without all the BS and not I'm not, not promising billions of dollars to people right now, people. Most people don't worry about making billions or millions. Most people just learn, want to be able to pay the rent, feed their families, keep their, their businesses alive. So that's why your message, from a little sales tip, is why your message needs to change a little bit. It's not about being the dominant market leader right now. It's about you taking care of the, your community, your team. And, and what I'm saying, your community is not just your team. It's your customers out there that are also part of your team. Yeah, so when you talk like that, you know, one of the things we, we, we were talking about here to start off with, with emergency and chaos and, uh, and, and the emotions that come up when we get into this place are fear, frustration, all those type of things. And uh, when I first started working with, with you 12 years ago, one of the first things that really struck me when I was in your room was you talked about this thing called serve first. And, uh, and right now, that's a key component to what we need to be doing as, as entrepreneurs and people in the world right now in, in the state of emergency and chaos, isn't it? That's right. Well, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. We always say that the formula for being invisible, if you're just starting as an entrepreneur uh, or if you're moving into a new market right now or you're dealing with a different set of customer needs right now, is you're kind of invisible because nobody knows who you are and you haven't had it and you haven't served in that area. So you find people to serve. 
Somebody asked me, I posted a, a, a video the other day. I said, if you're just starting, go out and, and find somebody that needs some help in their business or find, need some help in general and just help them, serve them. Uh, right now, a lot of people need a lot of help. <laughs> and a lot of people don't have maybe a lot of money to help. But if you can just even offer your services, it, two things will happen. Actually, three things will happen. First thing is that they're going to be very grateful for that. And you and number two is you're going to learn, you're going to learn what you need to learn to be able to serve more people. And number three, you're going to feel good about yourself because you're going to feel good about being able to be of service to other people. So that's the first thing is serve first. Second thing is that once you begin to have a little experience in an area, and this is counterintuitive for most businesses, is that if you're in emergence or an emergency, that's when you must promote, spend time and money to promote. Spend to promote. Spend to promote. Now, I'm going to tell you that even if you don't have very much money, whatever money you've got, spend it on good solid marketing to at least give you exposure to other people to say, I'm here, let us help you. Here's some value and just whatever you got to do, because ultimately over time, if you continue to do that and continue to promote and continue to serve as the pandemic passes, if it does, if it passes, then what will happen is you will have your, your trajectory will skyrocket. It may not see the results right now, but over time, you will see the results. And um, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's very powerful if you understand that most people are, are trying to hunker down, close the drawbridge, wait out the storm, hope for some government checks, and stay nice and warm in, the, in their homes until the smoke clears or the all clear siren blows. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if that's you, when they blow the all clear siren and it's for, and you're free to go, you're going to be so far behind. It's going to, it's going to take you your back. Yeah, right. You're back to invisible again. Um, so even if there's not an income attached to it, find people to help and help as many people as you can. I, I just wanted to mention this. Robert reminded me of this the other day. We studied a guy, but still study a guy by the name of Dr. Buckminster Fuller. Uh, Bucky Fuller, and uh, he predicted all this. He wrote a book called The Grunch of Giants, uh, where back in the 1970s and 80s, he predicted all this was going to happen. And um, he said it would be a great test for all of humanity. Uh, be a great test. You know, do we come together or do we, bl do we blow apart? And, and he said he had an operating principle. Barry's not, Barry knows this about me, and I know this about Barry, and that's what makes both of us a little bit crazy. Uh, and some people don't understand us very much, but he had an operating principle um, that Robert, myself, the advisors, Barry, and our team operate by. And, and I quoted him, I found the quote. He said, the more people I serve, the more effective I become. The more people I serve, the more effective I become. That's Bucky Fuller. So if you think about that, a bumblebee, the more flowers it goes into, the more it cross pollinates and the more flowers are, are, are created, right? So our shift, so I'm in this crisis like everybody else. We're all in the same, we're all in this boat together. So I have to shift, I have to pivot, I have to pivot our message a little bit, you know? And our message is rather than just working for an elite few, which is kind of where my business has, had, has gotten to, is I, I, I lost sight, I'm just being honest, I lost sight of the fact that there are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that are not receiving good information, good business skills, simply because I've priced myself out of their, out of their market, okay? Now, this is natural. I'm not saying I'm proud of it or not proud of it, but we made a commitment this week, just within the last six days, Barry and a few of us leaders and with Robert, is it we are going to provide world-class, not world-class, just real business skills for real entrepreneurs from real teachers, not fake teachers. And we're going to be make it available to hundreds of thousands of people at a price point that just about every single person can afford. Uh, so that, that, that there should be no reason why we can't serve every entrepreneur on this planet in a way that makes sense to them uh, and allows them to thrive because, um, 
that's just yeah. our passion. And so you got to ask yourself that. How many people are you serving? The more people that, you serve, the more effective you will become. Yeah. That that is it's counterintuitive, isn't it? And we and we've seen the opposite happen. We've seen, you know, people rushing for toilet paper and fighting in the shops. And it, it, the natural tendency for most people is let me hold on to what's mine and and scarcity comes in. And as entrepreneurs, people do that. You know, we have people right now that we're saying. You know, right now in this moment, especially like in South Africa, you have 21 days of lockdown. What an opportunity to work on your mind, work on yourself. And we have people saying, great, when this is over, then, then, then I'll do some courses, then I'll do this. And, and it's totally opposite to where you should be going because when you go down to what you said here, you've got to spend to promote. You've got to promote yourself. You've got to promote your mind. You've got to spend time, energy, and you've got to go out and do the greater good for the greatest number of people, whereas scarcity comes in, doesn't it? And it's like, let me hold on to what I have and look after what I have. But totally opposite. And you actually generate way more in the long term when you just go to the flowers. Well, yeah. And, 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 the, and the reason for that is because that's what you were taught in school. Yeah. You were, you were taught to take care of yourself. You were taught to, you know, I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to show you my answers. <laughs> you know, uh, we're going to, we're going to isolate the, the smart kids for the stupid kids and the average kids and all that stuff. And you were, we were divided. We were divided to, to be conquered. And, and, and you know, that's just the, I'm not talking about evil teachers or evil governments. I'm just saying that that's just the way we were taught. Okay. And so right now, those people that maybe had a difficult time in school, uh, this is your time <laughs> because you're, you're, you naturally collaborate. You naturally work with each other. Now, don't be foolish because remember in difficult times that it breeds criminal behavior. There are a lot of cheats and thieves and betrayals lurking in the shadows out there more than ever now. Uh, and in their minds, they're justified because, you know, it's, it's been taken away from me. My, my, my way of life has been taken away. So people go from denial of the situation to angry. So now I'm going to get mine back and they get angry. The next level, if you understand the grieving process, is then people go into depression. You know, it's like, it's too much. I can't do this. I just, I want to go away. Um, which by the way, is not a good idea. That's why if you have teams, don't let people go dark on you. Make sure you keep them in, together. And there comes a point, however, when you start asking yourself the question with you and your team, what's the meaning behind all this? What's the gift? Well, the gift is you're going to get smarter. <laughs> the gift is you're going to get stronger. You're going to get healthier and you should get richer as a result of all this. OK, if you can hang in there and learn the skill, the proper skills as, you, as you're going through and then you accept it. You accept, OK, this is the new world. I'm on top of it. I got it. I got my team, got my assets together. And we're going to rock and roll. And the principle of exchange will always kick in, right? You know, Bucky yeah. teaches it and you teach it. I've heard you teach it ever since I've known you. But I think when you talk about God and serve, people have that little voice like, what happens if I don't get something back? But when you do it with the right heart, the right spirit, it will naturally come back, won't it, because of exchange? Well, sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. I mean, if you're dealing with a criminal, you're not going to get anything back. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, you're from Zimbabwe, right? I mean, Correct. when the currency crashed over there, they found they were exchanging cigarettes and toilet paper over there. Hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So there's a, so there's always there's always something to exchange. There's always something to exchange. And when I say honor, the word honor um, means, in my mind, means honorable exchange. In other words, is you honor your, you know, keeping an agreement is is exchange. You know, I support you, you support me. Uh, sometimes you support without looking for anything in return. You know, that's, that's your choice. You'll make those decisions and you'll make good ones and you'll make bad ones. We all do it. That's entrepreneurship. If you don't, if you don't like making decisions, well, let the government make them for you and then wait for the handout. And that's, that's a way to do it. Maybe there's a certain sense of peace in all that, but I just, it just makes my skin crawl to think that, that I would have to, that, that I would just sit at home and wait for a government check um to 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 build my life upon so because one of these days you keep printing we keep printing all that money that's that stuff's going to be the toilet paper is going to be worth way more than the money <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
So, Blair, when we when we talk about chaos and emergency, you know, one of one of uh, my favorite books and one of the favorite things I teach is this uh, is your whole concept around code of honor. When we're when the heat is turned up and the pressure is turned up, what is what is the power of having a code of honor and and creating what we what we call and what what you taught a tight context? And how important is that right now in the time that we're in? Yeah, well, it's it's critically important. I, I, you know, as a matter of fact, when times are difficult, your rules and your context, your environment, your culture, your communication, all those things need to be even tighter. You know, and everything everything's when everybody's on an abundant stage, it tends to be loose. But when it gets, you think about yourself going into battle. Uh, you better make sure the person on your right and your left has got the same marching orders that you do. Otherwise, you know, we're going to lose some lives out here. Um, so. I use the analogy of a cup, okay, um, that inside your cup is all your, is your team and your businesses, uh, your, your business, uh, your services, all that stuff, okay? Uh, that's inside the cup. The outside of the cup, the framework or the cup itself is what we call the environment or the culture or the context. Now, the most important part of that cup are the rules of engagement that we all operate by. Like, if you make an agreement, you keep it. Okay, be on time. If I say I'm going to do something, then I better do it. And if I can't do it, I got to communicate to you that I can't do it at the first first moment. And we have to enforce those rules with each other. Otherwise, in the absence of rules, people make up their own. And in times of crisis, people downshift from their higher level of thinking to their fight and flight and sometimes criminal behavior patterns. It's just natural. So that's why you have to have a set of rules a tight set of rules that enforce the ideal behavior that this team wants. And it's going to be each of your businesses going to be a little bit different because you have different core values as yours are different than mine. So that's critical. So I always use it. I don't have it here, but you know, if your cup is a paper cup, <laughs> okay. So meaning that your culture is not so strong, your rules or kind of, we talk about them, but we don't really have them in writing. We don't really enforce them. Um, we have the rules, but the owners don't play by the rules, uh, but we ask other people, all that stuff, then you have a paper cup. So if in fact the, everything gets hot, which it is right now, that you, you hold up a torch, that thing's gonna burn. But if you got a tight cup, I think your picture was on here. Okay. <laughs> you have a tight cup, you have a tight cup, then no matter how much heat you put underneath this thing, it will get hot inside, but the cup will still hold its shape. It won't burn up. So right now what's happening is all, all governments, all businesses, all families, that context, their context is being tested right now. You know, some people are, you know, some people, because people are locked down in the same house, they're finding that there's cracks in their relationships. They're finding their cracks in their health and that they, they can be repaired by simply sitting down. Okay, what's important to us? What are the rules of engagement? How are we gonna do this? Based upon values, whatever your values are, integrity, love, honor, teamwork, knowledge, um, and support, okay? So so when we get into this, when we get into this place of chaos, you know, it's um, the, the the real actions to put in place are stabilize and systemize. So when I hear you, you know, when we talk about a code of honor, one of the things that that I've been talking to a lot of clients about right now is, especially at home, you know, people are saying you just said it, and, and I think it's a great point. People suddenly arrive home, they go to work five, six days a week, they go home, and suddenly. The, the, the context that their children has is when dad's at home or mom's at home, they mine, whereas suddenly you're not mine anymore because I have work to do. Now we get into this perpetual thing of chaos and emergency. So when you put in a set of rules, it helps you work through that level of chaos, doesn't it? Otherwise, what we see is people continually going through this motion until they systemize and stabilize with that tight context, that tight cup. Is that the truth? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, so, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, uh, if you're working from home, which almost everybody's doing now, 
and your kids, oh, daddy, your mommy's at home. <laughs> so playtime. I mean, no, it's not playtime. I'm still working, right? And so, and so what do you do? You sit down with your team. Your family is your team. You sit down and say, okay, time's a little different right now. Here's what's going on. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We got to change the rules around here a little bit. When I'm in my office and when I'm on the phone, then I just need to have it really quiet. And, you know, dinner times and meal times will be all be together. And this is kind of, whatever you got to do, but don't do nothing because then that's what creates the chaos. Um, what, what creates chaos is a lack of systems and a lack of management and a lack of communication. Emergence is normal. Chaos is normal, but in the growth of any business, chaos only exists. What is basic chaos is basically an emergency stage that's lasted too long. Okay, so how we come out of this crisis will be determined how well we can manage it, systemize what we're doing, reestablish rules of engagement, and then we'll move back to some normal operation. The, the new normal may not be the same as the old normal. But it'll have different rules. So you know, right now, I mean, one of the rules of engagement in business is you've got to be able to get on a Zoom call. You've got to be able to have a video camera in front of you, and you must be able to communicate. That's a given. That's a new rule. Okay. I mean, if you're a good copywriter and you write marketing copy, that's okay. Not nearly as important as being able to create a great video. Okay. So so there are new rules of engagement in business, and also with um, creating reach. I mean, your, your reach has expanded dramatically. There's hundreds of people on this call. Um, you know, we've got other members of our team around the world that, are, that have tens of thousands of people on calls because they are continue to reach out to people and utilizing the new, the new skills to get, obtain reach. So, but all that, it's all crazy. Uh, just because you have a lot of reach doesn't also mean you're making a lot of money. So you, you need to then take, that's one part of the system is connecting with people. The second part of the system is finding out what they need. The third part of the system is then being able to be able to allocate resources that they need and provide it to them and get some exchange from all that. So it's just reestablishing new processes, new systems, and we'll get to the, the level of stability again. So, you, you know, I've, I've heard you a lot over the last couple of days and weeks talking um, a lot to the BSDA team and to, uh, to a number of clients and webinars that you're on. You've been talking about this um, relentless connection. And, uh, and in a time right now, the importance of, of really tightening up that level of connection. You know, just sh share with us a little bit more around that, because I, I think that is really key where, where we sit right yeah. now. Yeah how we need to be drive that connection. That's a great point. That's a great point. You know, uh, there's a great writer. I love her. Her name is Brene Brown. Brene Brown, if you choose to look her up. She's a psychologist. And what she's been studying for years is about how we interact with each other as human beings. The one conclusion that, one of the conclusions she came to is as human beings, we are very different beings than any other living creature on this planet. The one thing we crave more than anything is connection. The one thing we crave is connection to other human beings. Now, if you think about that, that makes sense. That's why the great, that's why the greatest fear, one of the greatest fears people have is the fear of public humiliation or being ostracized or being kicked out of a group, you know, on Maslow's hierarchy after survival, and security is a sense of belonging. And if that's taken away, that's taken away, that's, that's a mortal wound. So if we understand that, that, that most human beings, nearly all, crave connection, then in times of crisis, what's the strategy? Increase the frequency of connection. Increase the frequency of interaction. Uh, another great author many years ago um, by the name of Axelrod, I think, wrote a book called The Evolution of Cooperation. And that there were three components. I'm not going to get into all of it. One of the components was to create brightness of the future. If you're trying to get people to cooperate, create a common goal and brightness of the future. But the second was frequency of interaction. The more times you connect with a person, the higher the level of trust. You learn their behaviors. They learn your behaviors. They know, they know you know what you can trust. So more than ever right now, like I said, I, I the day this 
thing busted loose, I came out with a video and the first, I said, your priority number one, beyond selling, be, priority number one is pull your team together. Pull it is your most powerful asset always. Um, and, 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 and I maintain that if you work together, you know, a danger on your own is pretty intimidating. Danger with there's five or six of us together doesn't look so bad. Okay. There's a lot of psychological studies. You look at a mountain that you're going to climb a hill by yourself, but boy, it looks pretty steep. If you've got three people going with you and you look at that mountain, it doesn't even look as steep to you. I mean, that's, that's just the nature of our human minds. So if you're isolating yourself and you're not doing that, it tells me two things. Either you're A, very, very selfish, which I don't think is true of people of this call, or you're afraid. You're in depression because the first sign of depression is secluding yourself and breaking and breaking communication. Um, that's why, you know, with our kids, you don't want to let, let them lock themselves in their room playing playing video games and stuff like that alone. Although the fact that they can communicate is good, um, but you got, they got to, they got to be able to connect with people. Now with social distancing, it's much harder. So you got to make the effort like this to do that. And if you're doing that with your teams and your communities and in your associations, I mean, right now we are on a call earlier that have a couple of vet, veterinarians in our group um, and they put out the word and now they're doing regular uh, webinars each week to all the all the female veterinarians in Italy, yeah. and 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 they and and the and the and the, and the calls are building and building and building, and they're saying thank you so much and thank you so much. So let me ask you something: even if they're not generating any income from that now, what do you think is going to happen when money frees up again? Who are they? Who are people going to trust? Who are people going to go to? Well, they're obviously going to go to the people that have been serving and adding the value and connecting. So if you're not good at connecting, get over it. <laughs> if you're not good at connecting, practice in front of people. The Barry's got some great drills on objection handling and presenting, and we're doing a program on how to do powerful presenting um, next week and, and learn what you need to learn. Right now, you should be investing in your education. Good education is going to give you the basic skills good business skills for entrepreneurs. Now's the time. Awesome. Just um, make one last question before we wrap this up. And I know there's a number of people, they always ask this when when uh, when they chat to me and find out that you know Robert and I know you and like, like what's Robert thinking right now? What, you know, what's Robert thinking? So it, I think it's really interesting because you know, one thing I love about him, he's very straight. He doesn't hasn't changed his message. He's very clear on what his message is. And right now, he's, a, he's sort of in that moment where, he's, where, where what he's been talking about for a long time is yeah. starting to come true. And, uh, you know, from the horse's mouth, if you want, from someone that sees him all the time, what are some of the pieces of wisdom that he's really dispelling to you and the rest of the advisors at the moment? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you that um, if you guys want to look it up, uh, London Real, London Real. Uh, did a great interview with him, I think, yesterday, the day before. It's a one-hour interview. Fantastic. If you have the opportunity to watch it, I've known him for 40 years. I was in tears watching that, watching that. It is the absolutely the best interview he's ever done. And it's also, if, if somebody were to remember Robert Kiyosaki, who was Robert Kiyosaki, this would be the, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate interview is just spectacular um, and very heartfelt, very sincere. And I think that if so you have an opportunity, go check it out. But if I were just to say that as a summary, this piece that I shared with you about Bucky Fuller, the more people I serve, the more effective I become. The more people I serve, the more effective I become. It's always been his philosophy. What is the artifact that I can use to serve people? Um, yeah, thank you. It was with Brian Rose. Thank you. Um, and, and, and again, that's the essence of Robert, of all of his bombastic, in-your-face, politically incorrect, incorrect stuff. I mean, that's who he is. That's how I've known him all my entire life. He has a huge heart, but he calls it straight. And he says, and he and I are bonded at a, at a place that th this is an issue of education. This is an issue. This is a crisis 
based upon years and years, even centuries of misinformation, horrible education, um, and just not being and being taught by people that are fake teachers and you know fake leaders. So, and, and that message has never changed. Uh, that message has never changed. I think the other thing, if you want to know something about Kiyosaki, is his devotion to learning and seeking knowledge is untouchable. I, I have never seen, he gets book, reads the same book eight, nine, 10 times, underlines it, interviews people, trying to understand uh, what the world is, is going on around you. And I think that if you're a message here, it's to, it's to wake up, wake up, get good education, the best investment you can make is in, is, uh, is in that gray matter between your right ear and your left ear and be an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur, go out there and find out what people want and give it to them. Serve the more people that you can, the more effective you become. Um, he is, like I said, he is no nonsense. He's been a great friend, a great mentor, an uncomfortable friend to have and an uncomfortable mentor. Uh, but you know what? I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today had I not met him back in 1982 when he walked into my surf shop to get me to buy his uh, Velcro wallets. Um, and that's how we met. And so we've been on this journey together. He will also tell you that your education is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Yeah. All four. All four. One without the other is like driving a car without missing a, one wheel. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Focus on all four. Surround yourself with all four and you will win. If you don't, if you follow, and we all make mistakes, but if you don't and you don't correct your mistakes, um, then you will lose. Uh, but we have an opportunity right now to give the world what it really wants right now. Good leaders, good teachers, good leaders. We have the opportunity to give the world exactly what it needs. And I'm not looking for the government to provide it. And I'm not looking for corporate America to provide it. As Robert would say, certainly don't be looking to the banks to provide it because the, in, from his perspective, the banking system is what, is, what, is what has created this entire turmoil. Um, that's why you should learn it and understand what, what's going on. But um, it's up to you. My final message to all of you is you are all teachers and you're all leaders. You are a leader and you're a teacher. I have learned in over 35 years in this business that you would not be on a call with me or with Barry if you weren't a leader and a teacher. You may not think you are yet, but you are uh, because you're taking the time to be on this Facebook Live right now and you're taking the time to, to learn something. While other people are, are looking, for, looking for a quick fix, you're looking to learn and to get better. So my goal, my request to all of you is if you learned anything today, Teach it to somebody else. Teach it to somebody else today. Make, make a list right now on a piece of paper. There are two people, one person that I want to share what I learned today with. And uh, don't add your opinions to it. Just, just state statement of the fact. This is what I learned and this is how it can help you. Okay. Right. You it's, that, uh, it is, uh, yeah, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to, uh, to host you today. Um, I have no doubt that we got everyone on this call got amazing wisdom. And I, yeah, I think, you know, your message, wake up, invest in you and what's between here, uh, you know, become and be an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur that's prepared to go out and serve and help other people create a better world. And I, and I think if we do that, we'll ride through this time of emergency chaos and create the world like it should be. So, um, you know, a number of people have been, have been asking us just before I say thank you to Blair and wrap up. A number of people have been posting, um, asking, you know, how do you find out more? We have a couple of programs coming up. If you want to know more, um, just in, uh, email info at uncoveringgreatness.co.za. We, uh, we have a pr powerful presentations course coming up in a couple of days. We have a uh, sales explosion program coming up in April. 14th and 15th live online, both of these programs. So you can learn at home, highly uh, experiential. And what we guarantee you is you'll make a massive shift from where you are right now to where you need to go. And uh, in South Africa, I put it on at 
on the 14th and 15th for a very specific reason so that when you get let out of lockdown, if you get let out of lockdown, you have the right mindset and you're ready to really move and hit this, hit this, uh, Hit the, hit the world running. Why? Because if you listen to what Blair said, an emergency and chaos, you've got to spend to promote and promoting is your ability to sell. And as Kiyosaki said, Blair, sales is the number one skill in business and in life. Lesson that you've taught me over and over again. You're a master at it. I've learned how to master sales. And, uh, and that art of sales, communication, connection, teaching, and serving others is essential. So um, thank you, bud. Great having yeah, you oh, by, by the, by the and, way, uh, any, it, last, any last words? Well, we have that Facebook group that we put up, right? So it's yes. an open Facebook group. So if you go to uh, Business Skills for Entrepreneurs in Crazy Times, Business Skills for Entrepreneurs in Crazy Times, it's an open Facebook group. There's lots of, there's videos up there. There's some great content. It's all free for you guys. Um, it's got my name tagged to it. So Business Skills for entrepreneurs in crazy times, Blair Singer. Uh, just go up there, watch some videos, get informed. Um, very soon in a couple of days, we're going to be able to give you a whole bunch more really great, good content. So uh, that'll help you in with your teams, with your selling, with your income. And just the last thing I just want to say is uh, uh, Robert said it on his Brian Rose interview. He said, right now, this is a test. And God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, wants you to do certain things. And if you do what God wants, us, if God, if we do what God, and again, I'm not religious and all that stuff, but if we do what God wants us to do, then we'll move to a whole new level of humanity, cooperation, and abundance. A whole new level, living at a, a standard of living that most human beings never thought would be possible if we learn our lessons. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you, thanks mate. you guys. So you guys got it. Business skill for entrepreneurs, Facebook page, Blair Singer, connect with like-minded people and uh, let's ride through this time of emergency chaos and create a different world coming out the other side. Blair, thank you so much for being with us and giving us your time for the rest of you that were on this, uh, this uh, broadcast. Thank you so much. Be awesome. Be the people that you were designed to be. Go out and make a difference in the world. And we'll see you guys soon. Be blessed. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.